say, so do we have to have people live with us and go to work with us? I said, no, you can't do that probably. Although there have been some people who have done just that, bought large homes and invited people that they disciple to live with them for a given period of time. But that's not the norm. That's probably not any of our situations. But yet there's a principle there, isn't there, that we need to replicate. We need to disciple in a relational kind of way, and we need to give opportunities to those we're discipling to see us in all sorts of different life contexts. And this was brought up yesterday. Uh, I can't remember. Maybe it was during the marriage portion. But the people we're discipling need to see us interact with our spouses. They need to see us out in the marketplace, right, getting coffee at a shop. Uh, how we interact with people that we don't know or people that are serving us. You know, how we inter interact with our children. Um, and so it's good for us to live some life with our disciples, to have them in our homes and we are in their homes and we begin to know each other deeply. So this is Jesus' wonderful model of life to life. So continuing in that uh, box there, because they walked with him, he was always available for questions and requests, right? such as, teach us to pray. What does this parable mean? Tell us, when will these things take place? You recognize all these from the disciples' questions of Jesus? Yes, Jesus proclaimed the kingdom to the masses, but he developed his disciples life to life. So life to life discipleship is the methodology Jesus employed to teach his disciples to obey all that he had commanded. So obeying all that he commanded, where is that from? Someone just shout it out. I'm sorry? Yes, Matthew 28. Right, where go and make disciples of all the nations, and and then it's, it says baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all that I've commanded you. I've actually heard someone quote that verse without the to obey or to observe. So he said, teaching them all that I commanded you. That would be easier. <laughs> Just let them know what Jesus said. But no, we're called to walk alongside someone like the life until they begin to learn to obey the commands of Jesus. So a much more relational uh, indication that, that Jesus' model was relational. So here's what we're going to do for just a minute or two. Uh, look at the dark blue in the box there. Which of the following might you more fully employ? This you'll do individually at your tables, just like yesterday. Uh, in your personal discipleship, and which should you more intentionally pass on? So I'm asking you to think in terms of two things. One, your personal discipleship of others. Which of these nine things that are listed here do you need to maybe more fully employ or, or live? But also think about the people I lead. The people that I'm discipling and, and, and leading. Uh, what do I want to pass on to them in terms of life-to-life -life discipleship? So what you see there are nine things. I'll let you read them on your own and just consider at your table for a couple minutes which is the Lord flagging for me. I need to do better here. Okay? So go ahead and take two minutes and, and do that. Let me explain one of these that might um, be not as self-evident. When I say inspiring vision... I mean giving people a vision for their life that they're not experiencing right now. So there's a disciple, for instance, who may be really racked with anxiety and worry. And, and, and as you're talking about that with them, you say, you know, I want to tell you, there's going to be a day where the Lord is going to bring you to a place <laughs> of peace in your life. And, and, and maybe, quote, you know, Philippians 4, 6, and 7, etc. Um, or some other verse and worry and, and anxiety. And God has this for you. He's made a promise. This is your future. You know, so that's what I mean by inspiring vision. 
But go ahead and, and take another minute here and uh, just circle one or two that you think the Lord might be calling you to engage in more for Jesus' discipleship for a moment. And that is that Jesus discipled to create spiritual generations. Now, yesterday, we read the first two passages that you see there, Luke 8 and Luke 9. But we are adding an additional one, Luke 10. So, um, let's see. Could I ask one of my brothers or sisters to just read all three of those verses? Luke 8, 1 to 3. Soon afterwards, he went on to the cities and villages of many, bringing the good news of the kingdom of God, to the twelve who are with him, and also some women who had been in the evil spirit and their families, Mary, called Magdalene, from whom several demons had come out, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's household manager, and Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their means. And then the second one is 9 and 2. And he called the twelve together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to keep. And turn one. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to go. Okay, wonderful. And I think there's good indication from the scriptures that the 70, just like the 10, or the 12, um, lived with and followed Jesus. And so, in the first passage, Pastor Ezekiel read, not only the 12 were with Jesus when he was proclaiming the gospel, but so were many women Mary Magdalene, Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Susanna, and many others. And so there were the 12, there were the women, there were the 70 living, walking with Jesus and learning from him and watching him proclaim the gospel. And then what did he do? He sent them out. But he didn't just send them out as soon as they came to him. He let them see what he was doing and then he sent them out. They watched him proclaim the gospel, and then they were sent out to do the same. Amen? Okay. Um, so here are my questions that you're going to think about for just a couple minutes in the blue at the bottom. Are others with you when you proclaim the gospel? In other words, do you bring a disciple with you uh, to share in that experience? Who have you sent to proclaim the kingdom or to disciple others life to life this year? How are you communicating the importance of the truth? Every disciple, a disciple maker. So again, just take a minute or two at your table and consider the answers to these questions and let, let the Lord challenge you if there's a place of challenge there for you. Maybe even take a moment and pray, but we'll only do that for a couple minutes and then we'll hand things over to, uh, to Bill. Okay.